Hello, this is my third video on Sir Francis Bacon's work, this one dealing with his vision of the nature and significance of science. Bacon's view of science can be summarized as a belief that science should be of utilitarian value, progressive, secular, and collaborative. As to its utilitarian value, Bacon believed that knowledge facilitated power. The practical usefulness of any knowledge was the measure of its validity. From this standpoint, science and technology would give man the understanding of nature that was necessary for its control. Linked to this view was his belief that new inventions and discoveries were a driving force in human history. The then recent impact of printing, gunpowder and the nautical compass were cases in point. On this basis, Bacon looked forward to a utopian scientific future. Man now stood at the dawn of a new scientific civilization. History was not cyclical, as supposed by many of the ancients, but potentially progressive, an onward and upward ascent spurred by scientific advance. The present age was a new period of great potential progress, comparable to the classical period. Many of Bacon's contemporaries, such as the poet John Donne, were cultural pessimists who deplored the seeming declining standards of the age. Others, such as many of the humanists, reverenced the achievements of the classical past so much that they wished fervently for a return to its standards. But for Bacon, both of these views were wrong. Humans should focus their attention and efforts on the extraordinary potentials of the present age and seek its realization. A better world was within our grasp, a secular faith which Bacon propounded with evangelical force. Although sometimes later portrayed as anti-religious and certainly influenced by Epicurean ideas, Bacon appears in fact to have been personally religious. Certainly he proposed that natural science would bring man a material redemption to accompany his progress towards the Christian millennium. What Bacon opposed was not genuine religion but superstition, which he saw as a major barrier to scientific progress. He also rejected the medieval view that the world was divinely permeated and ordered in a manner directly accessible to the human mind, such that the mind could be directly led to God's hidden purposes. For Bacon, the realms of faith and nature each had their own laws and appropriate method, theology for faith and science for the natural world, and these two had to be kept sharply separate so that they could each flourish better. Bacon also advocated organized and cooperative research. This vision was expressed most famously in his novel, New Atlantis, which described a philosophical utopia in which there was an organized research center in which trained investigators collected data, conducted experiments, and applied the knowledge gained to improving human life. In terms of impact, the most immediate and obvious expression of Bacon's ideas about the nature of science and scientific research was the English Royal Society, formally established in 1660, 54 years after Bacon's death, as a scientific society dedicated to collaborative research and with Baconian ideas providing its rhetorical legitimation and with an explicitly Baconian motto, nullius in verba, take no one's word for it. Later, particularly after the publication of Voltaire's Letters on England in the 1730s, in which he described Bacon as the father of experimental philosophy, Baconian ideas were taken up enthusiastically in other parts of Europe and were further boosted by the praise accorded them in the great French encyclopedia. More generally, Bacon's vision of science, utilitarian, progressive, secular, and collaborative, together with his hostility towards unquestioned traditionalism and his advocacy of inductive empiricism, helped shape the modern, scientific, technocratic view of the world. Thank you for listening.